So in today's video, we are going to be answering the question, can I leave an abusive spouse as a Christian? Well, the thing is that many Christians who are in abusive relationships feel stuck because they believe that God does not permit believers to break up from their spouses regardless of what they encounter in marriage. So in other words, they see marriage as a do or die affair. And a lot of people that find themselves in that kind of scenario end up being bombarded with advice such as, you know, God hates divorce, my dear. Prayer changes things. Just keep praying for him. It's going to change. Or it could be, well, love endures all things. You know, love covers a multitude of wrongs. Just keep loving him. Your love will change him. Or maybe they'll tell you, you know, you need to forgive 70 times, 7 times. Ah, you have an unforgiving spirit. Forgive him. And meanwhile, that person is punching you and blowing you, depending on what kind of abuse it is. Because the truth is that it is not just physical abuse that goes on in marriages. There are different other kinds of abuse. And we can talk about them in other videos. So, but the question is, these Bible verses that are giving us advice, do they really apply to the issue of abuse in marriage? And does God actually teach in his word that you should sit down in an abusive marriage and allow your life to be wasted? Absolutely not. So the thing is this, although the Bible addresses the issue of infidelity being a valid reason for a, a wife to leave her husband or a husband to leave his wife, there is no Bible verse that directly says whether or not to leave an abusive marriage. However, we'll look at eight Bible verses that can help us understand God's complete counsel on this matter. Because those that just go and quote one Bible verse and say God hates divorce and this and that, and they don't look at a lot more Bible verses to see the person of God and how God really judges things, then they're going to end up putting people in a place where their lives end up being at stake. And we don't want that. So let's look at these Bible verses one after the other and see what God actually says in his word. The first one is 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 10 to 11. And it says, Now to the married I command, yet not I but the Lord. A wife is not to depart from her husband. But even if she does depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And a husband is not to divorce his wife. So, this Bible verse, you can just look at it and say, you see, God said we should not leave our, our husbands. You know, God says the wife is not to depart from her husband. But then that same Bible says, but if she does depart, and it is, what that means is that in as much as God's preference is for us to stay together and work things out when problems come up so that we can become one. But there are some marriages that may not get to that point. Necessity will sometimes require that a wife or a husband remove themselves from an environment that is toxic okay so we don't just say god said don't but he said but if she has to leave if necessity requires it so what this means for you my dear is if you are in an abusive relationship that has come to a point that is affecting your mental health that is putting you at risk on any level and you are trying to work it out and it is not working out leaving for a moment might be an option to consider if it will help to reset that person's thinking and bring your point home that this you have your boundaries that are in place okay we can always address the issue of divorce and remarriage in a separate video but i just wanted to bring out that point that in as much as god wants us to be together sometimes necessity will require for you to move away for your safety and well-being and then the next Bible verse is Matthew chapter 14, verses 13. And it says that basically Jesus, after he heard that John the Baptist had been beheaded, that he moved to an another area. And that is basically self-preservation at work, right? Self-preservation is your right. It's your right as a human. So you're not going to use over spirituality and negate your, your right to self-preservation. If need be, Take the initiative to step away in self-defense before marriage ends up becoming a matter of life and death for you, okay? And also, that same Bible says that a wise man sees danger and turns away, but a foolish person walks straight into danger and is consumed. So, a woman that is being beaten up by her husband or being deprived or starved or manhandled, and then you expect her to stay there and be praying that prayer changes things, that is foolishness. It is not wisdom because wisdom says things have gotten out of hand. Please move yourself out of the way. So that is another Bible verse there for you. 
Then the next Bible verse, the third one that we're going to look at is John chapter 10, verse 39. And this is another instance where Jesus escaped from the Jews when they wanted to stone him for saying that he was the son of God. So basically, it still boils down to if abuse is escalating and change doesn't seem to be on the horizon, give them space, please. Your life is more important than whatever anybody's saying out there. Then the fourth Bible verse is Psalm 146, verse 7. And it says, God executes justice for the oppressed. He gives food to the hungry. And the Lord gives freedom to the prisoners. What does this tell us? God hates injustice. Man's inhumanity to man in whatever form. Is it in form of slavery? Is it in form of racism? Is it in form of gender inequality? Is it in form of physical abuse? Whatever form. God hates injustice. And he's... He's a specialist in freeing prisoners. Sad to say, a lot of women are prisoners in their own homes. And this is not to say that men do not experience abuse. I keep you know, hammering on the side of women because that's what this channel is about. This channel is about balancing the equation of the way things have been taught in the churches about marriage. It has mostly been put on the woman. She has carried a lot of burdens, both in the secular world and in many church settings. So that's why I keep talking about this. But obviously... God does not condone um, injustice, whether it is a wife oppressing her husband or the other way around. So, for example, we can see that he rescued Israel from Pharaoh. You know, he rescued Daniel from the lions. Then he rescued David from his enemies. He rescued Paul and Silas and even Peter from the jail. So if your, life, your marriage has become a prison, God is not expecting you to sit down there and be praying and be clapping. Sometimes you will need to stand up and take a step and go. And the fifth Bible verse is Matthew chapter 10 verse 16. It says, be wise as serpents, but harmless as doves. So what this means is this. Protect yourself within the marriage as a serpent. Be wise, you know. Do all you can. Use your wisdom. Try to fix things as much as you can. But if you are becoming so bitter or the other party is becoming so unhinged that someone is in danger of getting hurt, just leave, okay? So wise as serpents, gentle as doves. Sometimes as a dove, if you have tried to be wise and make things work and it's not working, sometimes you need to be gentle as a dove. Go away. Don't let it escalate into fighting and kicking. And there's some, there are so many stories out there. Even last week, I came across a story of a man that used a skate, a surfing board or whatever, and took his, his wife's life, right? We don't wait and be praying until things just blow up. In our faces like volcanoes. No, we don't do that. Be wise as serpents, gentle as dove. If you have used all your wisdom, you've tried as much as possible to live peaceably with that partner, but they have said that peace is not their portion, that they don't want peace. And please, if you're a peace lover, you have tried as much as lies within you, please give them space. God is not angry with you. So don't just pray. Make sure you are watching. Know when it is getting out of hand so that you evacuate before it's too late. So the seventh and eighth portions of scripture I'm going to read are connected to each other. So I'm going to read the first one and then explain it and then show how it ties into the next. So they are as follows. Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 to 7 and then John chapter 10 verses 17 to 18. So the first one says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a servant, a bond servant, and coming in the likeness of man. So basically, this Bible portion is talking about what submission should look like. So we see that Jesus is submitted to God the Father as his head. Right, like the book of I think First Corinthians chapter eleven verse three or so says, and then man is submitted to Christ and Christ, and then woman is submitted to man. Right. So basically, what this thing is saying to show us what submission looks like, Jesus said, "I and the Father are one." He said he was equal with God, but he didn't call it any big deal. He said, "Although we are equal, I'm going to submit to your authority." Right, and then. He became like a man. He ended up going down to the earth, doing all the menial jobs. And that's similar to what a wife does. When two people come together and agree to get married, the two of them have the same uh, um, rights as humans. They are equal. But then the woman says, you know what? I'm going to come under you. I'll take your name. We'll live together. When we discuss, when it comes to making decisions, after deliberating, we can go with your decision 
you know, after we've looked at both sides of things. But it doesn't mean that you're better than me. Although I'm equal with you, but it's not any big deal, right? It was important for me to bring that out. Now, we'll look at the next Bible verse, right? And, th and that is um, John chapter 10, 17 to 18. It says, Therefore, my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my father. So what this sh shows me is this. In as much as Jesus willingly laid down his life, he was not forced by God to go down. He went down by himself. And if at the last minute he had said, I don't want to do this again, he has the right to take up his life. So in the same way, your wife or a, woman, a wife goes into relationship and willingly submits. She laid down her life by herself. So if at any point that marriage is becoming not a partnership, but it is becoming a, a place of subjugation, a place of repression, a place of slavery, she has every right to take up her life again. So these are some of the Bible verses I, I chose to bring out. I know that if we go into the scripture, there is so much, more than enough, to show that marriage is not do or die. Number one preference of God is for couples to stay together, to work things out, to work as a team, to honor each other, to respect each other, to care for each other, to love each other, to forgive each other. It takes two to tango. But when it has become the job of one party to keep chasing after the other person, to keep trying to make it work, and the other person is actively working towards making things break up, working actively to ruin your life, to make you like feel like you're worth nothing, then you have every right to walk away. So in summary, what I want us to take away from today is this. God gave us adrenaline for a reason. It is for the purpose of self-preservation, right? So it is self-preservation is an inbuilt mechanism that God expects us to use. So a lot of people that want to end their lives, they will just go and stand maybe on a train track and allow themselves to be taken out. That is not self-preservation. So a lot of people that end up staying in marriages that they know that their life is at stake, it's just the same as standing on the train track and praying that God will touch the heart of the train. Some spouses are like trains that have lost their, 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 their brake and nothing you do can make them to break on time. It's either you are out or they are out. So instead of you to get to that place of it becomes a life-threatening situation, my life or your life, please leave that environment, okay? It's only a tree that will hear that it will be cut down. It hears, oh, let me go and get the, the knife and cut down this tree and it will stay there. Only a tree will do that. But if you're a human, God expects you to run for your life, to remove yourself from danger. So there's a place for separation, especially if it will help that other party reflect on their actions and mindset, and also for you to reflect on where you are broken, allowed your boundaries to be broken into, or where you are also contributing to what might be going wrong, right? For self-reflection, and then you come back together if it is possible. But if this doesn't work, or if it will even pose a danger to say, you know what, let's separate for a while and come back. If going back is going to end up putting you in danger, then... Please don't endanger your life. God doesn't require you to lay down, carry your cross by allowing yourself to be taken out prematurely. Okay? That's not what God requires from you. He's not a wicked father. He loves us. Your earthly father, who is not perfect, will not allow you to go and stand on a train track with a train that is coming. How much more your heavenly father? Okay? So refuse to feel pressured to do what society expects or to do what some churches that have refused to study the word in context, those, the, the pressure that they are putting you under. You are not under any obligation to listen to any of them. Make sure that God's word is your final arbitrator. For whatever they've told you, it's time to go back and study for yourself, not even just what I have said, and see whether or not these things are true. And then finally, God has given us a spirit of power, love, and sound mind. So use it as required, my dear. Okay? God is on your side. He's not against you. If you've done your best, if you've not done your best yet, try and work on it if it is a possibility. But if it is not a possibility and you've come to a place where your life is at risk, where things are getting out of hand and you do not know how things will play out, where one person will end up getting hurt, please 
just leave that environment and then you can work out things if possible from afar okay so thank you for staying with me to the end of today's video consider clicking the subscribe button like this video let me know what you think in the comment section and if you have any questions or any concerns especially when it comes to the things that the church has been teaching okay about marriage and womanhood feel free to you know let me know in the comment section and i'll be glad to address those questions or topics in new videos that are balanced by the word of god so i'll see you in my next video thank you once again for watching bye